Hello everyone, and welcome to a new Let's Play. If you're one of my subscribers already, then welcome back, and if you're uh, a new person, then hello, my name is Jingles1215, although most people generally just refer to me as Jingles, which I'm perfectly fine with. Uh, the funny story, the 1215 was really only shoved on the end because somebody on YouTube already had the name Jingles, which I wasn't too happy about, but anyway. Um, Welcome to my new Let's Play. Uh, after the old one, the Moral Oblivion one, which if you haven't watched, that's on my channel, ended due to unfortunate circumstances, I decided to move on and get started on this, which I've been planning to do for quite some time, really. Um, and it's good to finally get started on it, I think, really. Okay, so first things first, as you can see, quite plainly, and here, in fact, this is going to be a modded playthrough of the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Uh, I've got lots of mods installed, all of which you can see in the uh, description. I will only put that on the first video as well, so if you have any queries later on as to what uh, mods I'm using, you just have to go back to this video and check. Um, but I've got my entire list of mods there, along with the entire load order uh, from top to bottom in the Nexus Mod Manager, which is what I use to do put the, install the mods with. Um, and it's all sorted by BOSS, which I think is Better Oblivion Sorting Software or something, which is a little program you can get which sorts all of your mods in the correct order they need to be for them to work properly. And um, So there we are. I'm not going to be adding any more mods to what we've already got on the list, I don't think, really. Um, chiefly because I have, after much pain and struggle, finally managed to get this installed this particular installation of the game working without any problems and I'd like it to stay that way. Okay, so... Right, uh, it's modded, yes. Um, I've got this menu mod as well, which you can see, uh, which changes the, what the background of the menu looks like. Unfortunately, that's not on the list because I can't remember what it was called. Um, and I've also got lots of music, uh, custom music installed by myself, which again uh, is not linked to in the thing because it's not really a mod, it's just stuff I've collected from film soundtracks, other game soundtracks, um, as well as a few mod packs downloaded from uh, the Nexus every now and again some time ago, so it's a big mishmash of stuff. I've still got the original soundtrack in there as well because I quite like it. Um, and you guys can have fun trying to name all the uh, different songs from the different things, for instance, but uh, yeah. So, uh, without further ado, well, so I suppose we'll get started. I'm going to be playing as a... Actually, actually, I should probably mention this. I'm going to be playing as a mage character in this. We're going to be a wizard. Um, main reason for that being that I never play as them. I never really play as them at all. I always play as fighters and occasionally sort of thief-style characters or maybe assassins, but I never really go with, uh, with their mages. I've got a good magic mod installed actually called Supreme Magicka I believe which doesn't do too much crazy stuff a bit like Midas Magic or something which I'm not particularly fond of uh, but it does overhaul the magic system to a notable degree so that should be good fun uh, so uh, let's get started and get ready to quit the cutscene Right, okay, so as you can see, one of the first mods we've got installed is an alternate start mod. Uh, we will not be starting in the Imperial Prison. Main reason being, I want nothing to do with the main quest. I'm not particularly fond of Oblivion's main quest, and it's been overplayed, and I just don't, I'm not interested in doing it. Um, so, uh, I'm go not going to be playing as an Imperial. I'm not going to be playing as an Imperial at all, I'm going to be playing as a High Elf! Uh, main reason for that being, well, there's two reasons really. One being that High Elves are excellent mages, which helps. Uh, I'm, I'm playing with Oscuro's Oblivion Overhaul as well as uh, a monster mod installed as well, and various other mods, which will make the game a lot harder than stock Oblivion. So I kind of want to, while I'm not too concerned about being a, this being a statistics nightmare, uh, I still do want to have a bit of an edge if I can help it, because I don't want to spend too much time dying. Now, uh, I'm also going to be playing as a High Elf because um, nobody plays as High Elves. Nobody! Nobody ever plays as them. I've never seen a single 
Let's Play of someone playing as a high elf is quite remarkable, really. Uh, not even in Skyrim or, or, or Morrowind, so, um, yeah. Uh, I think the Altmer are pretty cool, personally, anyway. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be playing as a high elf, and his name is going to be Idris. Uh, it doesn't have any specific meaning other than the fact that it's sh he shares the name of one of my favourite actors and also I think there was an Islamic prophet called Idris at some point in the Middle Ages but uh, <laughs> for the, other than that uh, it's nothing, it's not a special name, I just thought it sounded cool. Now uh, I suppose I better get uh, sorting out the way he looks and while I do that I shall chat on to you about what's going on. So first of all this is going to be a uh, a role-played let's play, a very heavily role-played let's play, uh, much like other ones you may have seen by Variax or Squee, uh, who both did very, very, very excellent let's plays, which this is very much inspired by. Um, I wouldn't say copying, I mean I'm, t I'm taking a similar format, but I'd consider it more of a tribute, if anything, uh, because uh, those two some of the most fantastic let's plays I've ever seen of Oblivion and indeed most fantastic let's plays I've ever seen full stop in fact I'll put a link to them both in the description because uh, you you really ought to watch it if you've not watched it already um, it's really quite special and uh, so basically we're gonna be role-playing as I said and what does that mean essentially well actually you know what let's just Hit random until something cool comes up, and then we can fiddle with that. Um, basically, I'm going to be playing the game as if I was the character. By that, I mean we're playing as playing it as if you're thinking as the character in his head, um, without any of your prior knowledge, as opposed to playing as a player controlling your on-screen character with all the prior knowledge and stuff like that. You know, I won't be metagaming, which is basically um, kind of uh, gaming the system a bit. Like, if you're, you know, d just acting outside of what your character in-game would know and would be aware of. Uh, for instance, if you, uh, if you knew a particularly good quest or something that you could do, um... But uh, your character wouldn't have any way of knowing in reality about that quest or anything. Uh, you wouldn't go and do it um, because how would he know? So he wouldn't. If you you understand what I mean, basically you um, act with in character knowledge as if you're playing the part of a a character in a film or a book or even or something like that. And so what I want to do with this let's play is kind of I want to. It's less about just messing around and playing the game and doing all the quests we can and getting as rich as we can and getting as high level as we can. It's more I'm more interested in just kind of telling a bit of a story about this particular character that I'm going to be playing as. Now I've uh, put a bit of thought into this guy, what he's going to be like and such. Um, his name obviously is Idris as you know. Uh, he's from the Somerset Isles the homeland of the High Elves, and uh, he was a member of a wealthy family. Um, his parents were both very wealthy businessmen and merchants who had amassed a rather significant amount of wealth, actually, and had become quite important and influential within High Elf, uh, High Society. Uh, however, uh, he, his older brother, Edris's older brother, was basically the heir to the family fortune, and as such, he was kind of groomed in that kind of a way. As in, he was uh, he was taught how to run the business. He was uh, put in positions of power as he was growing up, and that sort of thing. You know, um, he got all the attention basically. And uh, poor old Idris here, um, he instead had to uh, make do being the second, you know, he wasn't going to inherit anything really. Uh, he wasn't going to inherit the uh, the uh, helm of the business, if you like, the uh, top spot. He wasn't going to run the place, he wasn't going to own it when he was older. So uh, he was carted off to study with um, uh, a bunch of scholars and to study the arts of magic in, uh, in um, the uh, Somerset Isles. Now, I, my, my law's kind of a, 
a little bit on the uh, rusty side, especially when it comes to sort of obscure stuff like the Somerset Isles. But um, I figured that well, the magic's quite prevalent there, and I figured that, like in the Middle Ages, you would often send off a useless heir to, um, you know, like a, um, um, a monastery or something to become a monk. Now, they don't really have that. I suppose they have priests. But uh, I figured that perhaps they'd send him off to basically just become a wizard and study in magic. So that's what they did. And, uh, and he, uh, he, was, he got quite good at it, actually, from an early age. And eventually he worked his way up um, from a lowly apprentice uh, to um, not a particularly masterful wizard, exactly. He's still fairly inexperienced, after all. But... Um, He's, he's got talent, and uh, he, the uh, court mage, where he was living, in the kingdom he was living, living in, uh, recognised this talent once when he was on a visit to the um, the place where he was studying. And, you know what, I think this looks good, actually. Uh, this could work. Um, the court mage paid a visit to uh, where the uh, place where he was studying, and took note of this, and after a little while, he accepted Idris to become apprenticed to the uh, to himself, uh, so he was became apprentice to the court mage for a few years, until um, he eventually um, had a bit of a problem, and that's kind of an understatement, really. At the end of the day, uh, unfortunately, what happened was he was framed for the murder of his uh, master, who he basically came to the laboratory or the wizard tower or wherever it is these guys hang out uh, one day to find him dead and he was framed for the murder now what with uh, the political situation in the Somerset Isles being a bit um, iffy and it's referred to I think by the NPCs in, in, in Oblivion every now and again um, what with the Thalmor becoming more and more powerful at this point in time I believe um, he suspected, probably correctly, that um, the murder and his being framed for it was a uh, a political thing. It was a political move. So um, basically, he decided to uh, just cut his losses and uh, not hold out for a fair trial because he clearly wasn't going to get one. Um, so he basically up sticks. He wasn't particularly fond of his family anyway. Um, being a kind of introverted little court mage and stuff like that, stuck with the um, stuck with his uh, master, the court wizard. He didn't really get out much, and on honestly, the court wizard was probably his only serious friend. So he had no real problems getting up and leaving. Uh, so he snuck out of the. Um, he managed to escape from uh, prison. And he snuck out the uh, city, and he got on the first boat he could get, uh, headed for Cyrodiil. And here he is, basically. We're in the boat now, in, 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 in his little cabin. And soon enough, we're going to arri arrive in the city of Anvil. Um, I think this is good, actually. This is perfect. Let's go with that. Should we want to be a high elf? Yes. So here we are, we're soon about, about to arrive in the city of Anvil. Oh yeah, and a bunch of mods going to kick in now probably, so uh, a bit of DLC probably as well. I'm not sure which ones I've got installed exactly. Uh, yep, that's another mod. Uh, I think we may be good. So here we are. It's been a bit of a rough journey. He's not great with... Uh, he's not great uh, on boats and stuff. He gets a bit uh, seasick and whatnot, but uh, here we are anyway. Uh, level 1, health 60, that's kind of all for Magicka 210, which is great. Um, so yeah, the um, what this mod also allows you to do, the alternate start mod, uh, is it allows you to fill in a kind of more role-playing details. Like obviously you get to do birth, sign, and race. Uh, he was born under the sign of the Atronach, um, which is interesting because it will give us a huge 200 point Magicka bonus to begin with, so that will set, set us up quite nicely in terms of Magicka. However, it comes at a cost, and that cost is essentially you don't regain Magicka naturally over time when you're outside of combat or whatever. Uh, instead, we have a 50% spell absorption to recharge our Magicka, so basically if enemies fire spells at us, 
will absorb 50% of the power and it will recharge our own magic, which is quite neat. But basically it means we're going to have to rely a lot on potions and things, and the fact that we have lots of magicka to begin with. Uh, I don't think... Uh, resting in a bed might restore it, but I don't think it does. So, um... It's kind of a double-edged sword, but I like it for that, actually. Um, so, yes, he was born with the sign of the Atronach. Now, uh, specializations. We basically do his class now, so uh, I think I'll go with that as a base. Um, his specialization, obviously, is going to be magic. He knows almost nothing about... Well, he's, he, he, he only all, all he has in terms of sneaking around and stealthy stuff is his natural abilities. And uh, In terms of combat, he has no idea how to fight whatsoever. Um, he is, he's never been tutored in swordplay or anything like that, um, his studies have been strictly, um, academic and magical. So, um, as a result of that, uh, he's not going to be able to wear any armour, because he wouldn't know how, and he would find it too heavy and clunky, uh, aside from maybe something like fur gloves or boots or maybe a bit of fur armour, because that's fairly straightforward, but it's certainly nothing like any plate armour or a chainmail or anything like that, it's not his thing. Uh, in addition to that, he is not going to be able to use any real proper weapons for a while. Um, he's kind of capable of using maybe like, you know, the old blunt cudgel or something like that. Um, he can obviously use magical staffs, he's been trained to do that. Uh, and he can sort of swing a dagger at someone, and that's kind of about it really. Um, that won't obviously stay the same the whole time, but until he gets someone to actually train him in swordplay or whatever, uh, he's not going to be uh, using swords and things like that because he simply wouldn't know how to do it. Um, training to use a sword is kind of a complicated affair and uh, he'd be more likely, if he just picked one up and tried to use it, uh, he'd be more likely to hurt himself than his enemy most likely. He's not particularly physically strong either so yeah, the specialization is most definitely going to be magic. So we need to pick his favorite attributes first. Well, first of all, he's pretty bloody intelligent, you know. You don't become a uh, sort of academic and a mage and a wizard or whatever uh, by being stupid. So he's pretty intelligent. And he has uh, a decent enough personality. Um, he's used to having to deal with um, high society in... Uh, in, uh, in the Somerset Isles, you know. He was kind of brought up in that... Uh, level of society, you know, he's um, familiar with like um, how to deal with people, how to be polite and all that kind of thing. Um, so again, like personality, probably not maybe a particularly great thing for a mage, you might want to pick willpower instead if you were setting this up, but this is for roleplay purposes really. So we've got intelligence and personality here. Moving on, we now go to the skills. Now, Alchemy, obviously, he's well versed in. He knows what he's doing with that. He knows plenty of ingredients. He's studied it all uh, prior to coming here. Uh, alteration, he's studied. He's basically studied all the major magical arts at the end of the day. Uh, so, conjuration, destruction, illusion, um, mysticism, uh, restoration. And uh, am I missing one, perhaps? I'm not sure. Alteration, alchemy, or is that all of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's everything. So there we go. He's this guy's a pure out mage. You know, he doesn't have skills in anything else other than magical ones. So perhaps not a very efficient class build, but again, we're uh, we're role playing this really. We're gonna get. We're kind of building a character as opposed to a uh, efficient killing machine here. So uh, we'll just uh, wizard, I suppose. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. Yep, create it. Done. Yes, I do. Now, uh, this is the bit I was mentioning earlier. You Social status. This is kind of the extra roleplay stuff, which is kind of cool, I think. So, what's your social status? You got manual laborer, skilled craftsman, merchant, warrior, priest, academic, nobleman. Well, Thedas, uh Sorry, Thedas, What am I talking about? Idris. Um, I'm still trying to get out of more oblivion mode. <laughs> now, Idris, uh, he is most definitely an academic. What's his primary area of research? Battle magic, theoretical magic, Tamrielic history, Daedra worshippers, or necromantic practices or other. Uh, Thedas, although he's obviously studied quite extensively in magic, and first and foremost his primary trade is that of a wizard or a mage or whatever you want to call it, um, his real area of interest is Tamrielic history. Uh, 
Idris is a historian, first and foremost. Uh, he loves studying history. He's got quite a decent collection of books, which he actually managed to take some of them with him over here to uh, Cyrodiil. And uh, he just loves to study history. He loves visiting ancient ruins. He's quite the explorer. Uh, he's very curious. Uh, he loves going off exploring and hiking around and seeing new things. She hadn't, didn't have much of an opportunity to do back in the Summer Isles, but now he's here in Cyrodiil, he's got plenty of opportunity to go wherever he wants, whenever he wants. So yeah, uh, and he loves collecting books as well, especially ones related to anything to do with history. Uh, he will rarely sell a book anywhere. Uh, it's just one of the little quirks of the character which I'm going to be picking up on in the game. Like, he will never sell a book to anyone unless perhaps it's one he already has a copy of. Uh, if he finds a book, it's going in his pack and it's going in a chest somewhere uh, for him to read later. Um, one of the things I want to try and do is see if we can't actually collect almost every book we could possibly get in this game. It would be quite interesting uh, to do that. So, what's his financial situation? Well, he uh, he's pretty wealthy. He uh, his uh, None of his finances were seized or anything when he was arrested, you know. Um, I think he was a little too eccentrically paranoid, especially when you have to live in that kind of echelon of Ultima society where it's all backstabbing and stuff like that. Um, so his, his, his modest fortune was kind of locked away in a safe, which he managed to get to um, before he left. Uh, so he's taken every, basically everything he owned, all his money he's ever basically saved up with him. So he's pretty wealthy uh, in relative terms. And he's arriving at Anvil. Uh, are you afflicted by any of the following diseases? No, we're not. He's not diseased at all. So, we filled out all the immigration forms they're called on there, which is all the basically, all the, all the info we need. And now, uh, we are going to um, basically go to sleep in the bed, and hopefully in the morning we will have arrived in Anvil. Uh, yeah, we've got a little thing there which enables us to do the main quest should we wish, despite doing the alternate start, but I'm not interested, so we'll just get rid of that. So here we are in Anvil. It's, uh, what time of day is it exactly? It's 11.02am, so uh, late morning. It's a nice day. Uh, as you can see, one of the mods I've got installed is uh, Better Cities because as you can see we've got the anvil docks here which has been completely redone and refurbished and expanded and such um, so that's quite interesting right now our bag over here has got our stuff in we've got a silver dagger our shoes uh, a change of clothes basically a red silk hood our robes some potions of healing some potions of uh, sorcery what foods left over from the trip and his collection of books I mentioned um, some soul gems and a thousand gold which is all the money he has so he's pretty comfortably well off he's not a poor peasant with nothing to his name other than the clothes he's standing in you know um, <coughs> pardon me so here we are standing at the gates to Cyrodiil essentially and uh, as I said he's quite inquisitive he likes um, looking around and having a look at stuff. So right now, even though he's kind of, you know, a bit tired and achy from the trip and stuff like that, and he's probably pretty hungry too, um, his first instinct actually is to just kind of walk around and see what's what. Um, he's never really been out of the city he grew up in after all, so this is all kind of quite exciting and new to him. So, uh, right, we've got the Black Horse Courier Special Edition Anvil Harbor Expansion. Now this must be do to do with um, better cities. Um, major construction finished in Anvil Harbour by decree of the Countess Malona Umbranox of Anvil. The docks underwent some major reconstruction as of late. Gone is the shanty little pond formerly used as a bay to harbour ships. Welcome is the site of the new harbour, wide and spacious. Countess Malona, with the help of city planners, the Majors Guild and an Argonian underwater construction company, has not only greatly improved the port capacity of Anvil, 
that has also improved shipping and sailing for all of Cyrodiil. While the inaugural celebration and grand opening have passed, Countess Malona hopes that all will make the journey to Anvil to see their proud new harbour. Well, here we are. In all its um, splendour. Hello. Hello. Um, the Flowing Bowl. I think it's a tavern, isn't it? Uh, it's, I'm a little unfamiliar with um, better cities. I mean, I've played with it before, but I can't remember a lot of it, actually. Um, that's cool over there, that little shipwreck on the side. Um, should be new shops and things Good added, morning. all that kind of stuff. Uh, what what's is that? It now? Oh, it's just a warehouse. Um, so, one of the first things we need to do, actually, oh. is we need to try oh. and get our hands on some supplies and whatnot. We have, uh, we're not very well equipped to be going around traveling around Cyrodiil right now and all we've got is a few slices of cheese, some tomatoes and a change of clothes and that's not really that's not really much help so um, we first of all need to find a shop of some kind. Lel's quality merchandise. Well this will probably fit the bill, hopefully. We've got just enough money probably to get us off to a decent start so we won't have to uh, How do you do? beg in the streets to try and get ourselves some money to start off with. I'm Norbert Lels. I let my merchandise speak for itself. Look around. If you see something you like, we'll talk about a price. All right then. Only quality goods for sale here. What if can you I say interest so. you in? So, uh, what have we got here? Apron of the Master Artisan. Nah, kind of useless really, especially for the price. Boots of the Eel. Oh, rubbish. Useless stuff. Oh, a common cloak. It's an expensive cloak, but it looks a horrible colour. Um, I may grab a cloak. Um, that could be useful for when you're travelling around, after all. Um, potion of invisibility. That could be pretty useful, but it's a little on the expensive side, I think, really. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Let's get it. You never know when you might need one of those. Uh, and some food, actually. Yeah, let's have an apple. Some bread. And a carrot. We can have that for lunch. We'll uh, save the uh, days old uh, cheese and tomatoes for when we're desperate, I think, really. So that's everything. Um, let's try on the new cloak, actually. Why the hell not? Oh, not bad. Decent fit and everything. Right, so. Right, let me just pause the game here, actually, I need to check on a few things, see how it's all working out, uh, you know, whether the recording's working, how much space it's using up. I'm recording this, you see, uh, in a larger resolution than I normally would. Um, hopefully, it'll result in a higher video quality, but uh, it's probably going to take up a lot more disk space, so bear with me, I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back, took a little break to check things were working properly and um, go and walk the dog and all that kind of stuff. So I'm back now and here we are. I've also upped the brightness a little bit just in anticipation of any dark caves we may come across later on. Now then, so we've uh, got the immediate priorities out of the way and uh, we've been to buy uh, a couple of things from the store mainly our lunch and that cloak and I always figured it funny how you didn't get cloaks in Vanilla Oblivion or Morrowind or Skyrim for that matter when you know it, it seems like an almost standard item in every kind of fantasy setting for any if, if you're going off traveling you, you take a cloak with you you know um, but whatever we've got one now and um, nothing special just an ordinary cloak as well as our robes are just ordinary robes um, However, uh, first chance we get, we'll do a bit of enchanting and all that kind of stuff, and hopefully we'll stumble across some useful items too. Um, which brings me on to a, uh, another point. Um, as I said, we won't be doing the main quest. Um, as far as uh, Idris is concerned, and I must remember to say Idris, not Thedas, because I already did that, did that twice, I think, before when I was looking over the uh, footage. Um, just knocking old habits, you know. Um, as far as Idris is concerned, he's not—he doesn't really care about this uh, 
the Emperor's assassination and stuff like that. Like, oh no, you know, the Emperor's assassinated, it's big news and stuff like that. But it doesn't really affect him. And at the end of the day, you know, he's quite a proud Ultmer. You know, he's not one of the Thalmor, mind you. Um, but he certainly kind of sympathizes with their views of it, you know. Um, for instance, he doesn't. Idris doesn't believe um, Talos is a god, for example. He figures there's only eight divines, and the ninth one is there just uh, for almost propaganda value for the Empire. I'm not saying that's necessarily true, but it's just what uh, it's just what Idris thinks, uh, because that's what his opinion would be on the subject, really. Um, now then, what's this place? Harborside Southern Warehouse. What's this? Just say, Idris is pretty curious, explorative, just going around, checking out what all these places are, you know, the Anvil Ship Company, eh? What's in here? So a lot of this is really new to me, I've not explored this. Sextant. 50 gold, it's worth. I wonder if it does anything. Anvil, three books. Uh, hello there, Sea Scale. Welcome, welcome. Um, okay, so we can apparently buy a ship from this guy if we wanted to, and uh, we can book passage on a ship as well. So that's interesting. Uh, rumors? We're all talking about the Emperor's murder. We have no Emperor and no heir. That's never happened before. I suppose we should all be worried. Yes, I suppose we should. But again, as I said, he doesn't care. Really, at the end of the day, in fact, as far as Idris is concerned, anything that weakens the Empire is probably a good thing. Um, so, yeah, in terms of his religious views, um, he doesn't pay a great deal of attention to the gods and such, although uh, he does, as every kind of scholar an academic would obviously honors kind of uh, Julianus who's like the god of um, uh, god of I think it's wisdom logic Greetings literature and history so obviously that's right up his street and also um, because he's from the Somerset Isles he honors Xarxes uh, not to be confused with the Mysterium Xarxes or anything like that uh, Xarxes is the um, high elf god of uh, secret knowledge I believe at least that's what it said on the wiki so uh, that's also kind of right up his street too. So you know, um, hmm, he's not very he, yeah, but he doesn't really pay much attention to the gods. As I said, it's a it's kind of a lip service thing, you know. Uh, not a big concern of his. Now then, so we've kind of explored most of the docks here. Um, blimey, is that snow? Okay, well, I guess it's snowing. Um, <laughs> oh, it's probably a uh, it's part of uh, natural environments which I've got installed, which uh, alters the environments and stuff like that. And one of the things it includes is seasonal weather. So uh, I guess right now, uh, what is it? It's last seed. So that's I assume. I don't really. I'm not really familiar with the uh, Tamriel can calendar. I must admit, but I assume that's winter. So it's probably pretty cold out actually. If it's snowing, I don't think you'd be able to tell from all these people standing around in short sleeve stuff. Well, uh, anything in here? Of use? This doesn't apparently belong to anyone, so. A bit of old food. I don't really trust it, though, to be honest. Well, nothing more to see here, really. Um, although, I suppose we could get some. De well, have our lunch in here. The flowing bowl, or whatever. Get something to drink as well. Get out the uh, snow out there. <laughs> what? Nothing. How are God, you? grumpy woman. Oh, hello. Hello to you too. Uh, no, you are. Welcome to the flowing bowl. I'm Mainlord. My twin's name is Canelord. How to tell us apart? I'm in brown. He's in blue. Simple, really. I see, very informative of you. Not that uh, I particularly care, actually. In fact, all I want right now is to sit down and have some food. Um, Let's do business. 
What have you got for sale? Fists of the Drunkard, huh? 